pig. Good morning and welcome back to Honey Rock Acres. You know, something that's been on my mind a lot lately, I want to talk a little bit about today. Uh, if nothing more than just to kind of get it out there. It specifically came about because I've been hearing and also seeing a trend with people that uh, farm and homestead just getting out of the business. And as I started to dig into it a little bit more, it's even more alarming, honestly, than I thought. What's up, girl? Good morning. Good morning, Lucille. Now, I actually think that a lot of it starts with the whole reason why I, along with a lot of other people, actually got into homesteading, uh, which was around when COVID happened. And, you know, there were shortages on everything, and it sort of got people thinking about, um, you know, how to maybe mitigate the risk and I think along with those lines that risk seems like it's not there anymore to a lot of people and and so there's no urgency anymore and of course I'm just speculating on that I, there's no data for that but truthfully the reason I think that's most prevalent is the current status of our economy you know if you're not already pretty well established it can be expensive uh, trying to get into homesteading and you know, I, I work full time, my wife works full time, and you know, we try to homestead seven acres, uh, and it can be a little pricey. And we bought sort of a semi established homestead already, uh, and so I didn't have to spend a lot of money trying to put up fencing and, and things of that nature just to get started uh, or buy a whole lot of, you know, temporary fencing. Uh, and so, long story short, I think it's just because people can't really afford it. And so they're they're having to take you know extra jobs and, and things of that nature and and uh, so yeah they've just maybe run out of time. Good morning, pigs. <laughs> You guys hungry? All right, all right, all right. I'll get your food first. They're nice and happy now.
So this whole rabbit hole started, you know, with me kind of looking into maybe some trends as to why, you know, homesteaders are getting out of it. Uh, and of course it led me down, further down the rabbit hole into, well, why are farmers getting out of it? Um, and I think the reasons are related, but not 100% the same. And one of the things that I think is really more specific to homesteading is I think a lot of people got into it because it was kind of trendy, right? When, when COVID happened and, you know, kind of all the stuff changed, everybody was at home a lot. Um, you know, it sort of became the, the it thing. Uh, and I say that as one of those people that did that, but I think a lot of people just jumped into it without really understanding what they were getting into. Uh, what it actually means uh, and I'm not pretending to be an expert on the matter because obviously I'm as new as anybody to it but honestly I think a lot of people did it unprepared I don't think they were ready for the challenges um, obviously it's not easy <laughs> the chickens are trying to sneak some of the corn So I think that the idea that I'll just grow my own food and I'll raise my own animals and we'll do all the things, uh, I think it was harder than a lot of people expected. Uh, and honestly, it, there are aspects of it that were harder than I expected. And, and I kind of pride myself on doing a bunch of research before I get into something. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's not easy. Whether it's planning for how to deal with a sick animal or uh, people getting attached to the animals they're raising um, or even in the garden, you know, not not being prepared for different sicknesses that the plants can get or the soil stuff or all that. I mean, you know, I, I am one that says, hey, you know, the best way to learn is kind of get your hands in it and do it. Um, but it's also easy to kind of get in over your head and not be ready for how to handle those things. Have a good day, pigs. And of course, it takes a not insignificant amount of time to keep up with farm animals, the property, house, garden, family, etc. You know, and with all that, I've heard and seen personally people say that they're getting out of it because there just simply isn't any money in it. Um, and I think the reasons for that are directly related to the reasons why a lot of farmers are getting out of it.
The only time that I hate using those plastic posts is when it's really dry and the ground is really hard. And yeah, we're in a drought, so everything's dry and everything's hard. So it's gonna be fun getting those in today. You know, something that I don't believe is really well known is that farms in general are on the decline. Uh, and not just a little bit, like a large decline. And they have been for many, many years. I think everything from rising costs, you know, inflation, um, you know, the, just the value of what we pay to the farmers seems to be going down. Uh, and a lot of these huge farms, these big, you know, mega farms, that's what I'm calling them, uh, they're heavily uh, incentivized by government funding. Uh, and a lot of the smaller farmers don't qualify for that stuff, you know, and I came across a stat that is expecting the net farm income this year to be down two and a half percent over last year Which maybe doesn't seem like a lot, but when it's continued to decline over all these years It's kind of understandable why a lot of farmers aren't sticking with it and why a lot of my generation moved on to other industries Seven percent decline in farms from 2017 to 2022. I don't know what the current stats are, but that's pretty alarming to lose that much over five years. And if that trend keeps continuing, there aren't going to be a lot of farms left in the next 20 years. And with inflation driving the cost of everything up, you know we had four percent last year, uh, and eight percent the year before. I don't know what the rates are right now this year. Uh, but you, you have a hard time with the small farmers being able to be competitive in the market. They're not getting the same subsidies that the large farms are. And so the large farms can produce at a lower cost, uh, which allows them to have lower prices. And so when your smaller farmers are getting paid less, but their costs are going up, you know, more dramatically than the larger farms, uh, there's... I understand why people say there's no money in it uh, and I can honestly say I see that it's it's hard to convince people that don't understand the value of fresh healthy foods to pay more for food that they can go to the grocery store and get say all this without even getting into the details of all the other things that plague farmers around the world like the wars that are causing their supply stuff to get it more expensive like fertilizer is a big one or the fact that our topsoil erosion is not in good condition or the fact that they're so reg heavily regulated uh, that it's really difficult to do anything by the book. And listen, my only agenda with this is just to bring awareness to it. It's something that's been on my mind a lot. It's been on my mind, frankly, for a number of years. And it's just really discouraging when you start to dig into it and you start really reading and understanding it more about why it's so hard uh, and why you start seeing all these farms disappearing and turning into subdivisions. And uh, it's just easier for, you know, a farmer that's maybe got a family to say, hey, I can sell the land and provide for my family or I can struggle on the land and I might not be able to provide for my family and end up losing it anyways. So uh, just 
keep your local farmers in mind take care of them understand why their prices might be a little higher their stuff's probably healthier it's probably been better taken care of it's probably not inundated with other chemicals and things it could be but most likely it's not uh, and and just uh, just know that they're doing their best you guys come down here to check us out what's up pigs how you guys doing you just coming to see what's up you hoping I got food for you I don't have food for you, buddy. No, I don't have food for you, buddy. What's up, Henry? You're such a good pig. Yeah, you're such a good pig. Yep, I don't have any food for you right now, guys. I'd like to know what other people think about this topic. You know, what What do you think's causing the exodus of farmers and homesteaders? Um, you know, we we had COVID, which helped drive up, you know, some of the homesteading movement, uh, and I think it's still ahead of where it was before, uh, and hopefully it stays that way. I, you know, as I've grown in this lifestyle, I really have come to appreciate beyond just the the food or the you know the um, self sustainability aspect of it. I really appreciate all the the mental health benefits I've personally gained from it, uh, and even physical health benefits because I'm a lot more active. But, you know, all that to say, what do you guys think is affecting it, uh, especially the farmers? Is there anything we can do about it at this point? You know, I've personally heard from people that have said, you know, man, I'd love to do this full time. I've, you know, I've bought stuff from other local farmers here and most of them have second jobs, um, which is their primary income beyond the farm. Uh, and, I, and I know some that just exclusively farm hay. I know some that farm, you know, other animals and things. And all of them have said, yeah, I'd love to be able to just do this and make it a full-time thing, but there's just not enough money in it. Uh, and it's really disappointing. And I think that's the problem to solve. Um, how to make it either more affordable to do so uh, or more profitable to do so. And again, I don't know very many farmers that are in it for the money, but, you know, just in it for a, you know, a, decent lifestyle decent livelihood you know i even had a grandparent in the family uh, who grew up farming say i ah, don't do it it's not worth it uh there's just no money in it and you know she's she's right i i know she's right i've i've done enough digging personally to to understand the financial aspect of that um but the one thing that i appreciate is that every time i've ever gone to see them they've always at least seemed like they've been genuinely happy. Never wanting for more, never feeling like there wasn't enough. Um, and I don't know, it's, it looks can be deceiving, but they just, they generally seem like uh, people that are comfortable with their lot in life and, and very humble and, and uh, you know, I appreciate that. And uh, I think that alone is one benefit of not being stuck in the rat race so forgive me for being long-winded on all that if you've not picked up on it we're just moving the pigs again which you guys have seen me do several times on this channel that the only difference this time is we're moving them back here to this oak tree which they haven't been around before and they're coming from way up there on top of the hill more pig wrangling either way i appreciate you watching if you've stayed this long and you know if you give some feedback uh try to spread the word that we need to help take care of the farmers and uh yeah thanks for watching and you guys have a blessed day see you next time